Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. Nice to see everyone again. And for today's video, we are focused on the carboxylic acid. If you remember, carboxylic acid is your COOH. We are going to have five subtopics for your carboxylic acid. Starting with your 7.1 structure of carboxylic acid. Moving to your 7.2 IUPAC nomenclature of carboxylic acid. Your 7.3 physical properties. Your 7.4 preparation of your carboxylic acid. Last but not least, 7.5 chemical property of your carboxylic acid. And for this video, we will cover 7.1 and 7.2. So let's jump straight into your 7.1 structure of carboxylic acid. First and foremost, the functional group of your carboxylic acid over here is your carboxyl. So carboxyl looks something like this. Everybody knows that your carboxyl is actually your C double bond O attached directly to your COH. Bear that in mind, your double bond O and the single bond OH must be attached to the same carbon. And that is your carboxyl group. And because one carbon can only hold maximum four bond, so when the carbon holding single bond OH already, Double bond O, the carboxyl carbon, can only have one more bond and this bond will be attached to your R group, whether it's a cyclic, straight chain, aromatic, branches, it doesn't matter. But you realize that your carboxyl carbon must be carbon number one. It must be at the side carbon. Okay? We have two basic structure of carboxylic acid. The first one is your aliphatic carboxylic acid. Your aliphatic carboxylic acid is your standard COOH attached to your R group. Your R group over here is your alkyl group, knowing that your alkyl group is your carbon. So it can be your straight chain, it can be your branches, it can be your cyclic. Okay, so that is your R group that can be straight chain, branches or cyclic. Another structure of carboxylic acid that you always come across is your aromatic carboxylic acid. And the aromatic carboxylic acid that we normally come across is your benzoic acid. Knowing that your benzoic acid, as what you have learned in your benzene chapter, your benzene ring must be holding directly to the carbon that holding the OH and the double bond O. Your carboxyl group must be directly attached to your benzene ring. And that is your benzoic acid. Okay, I hope you remember your benzoic acid from your aromatic compound topic. And that's it about the basic structure of carboxylic acid, knowing that your carboxylic acid can be aliphatic and also aromatic due to the presence of your benzene ring. Next, let's jump straight into the IUPAC naming of your COOH. So the basic naming of your COOH or carboxylic acid is changing your alkene E. Your E at the back will be changed to become oic acid, O-I-C acid. Okay, so the first example that we have on the screen is your propane alkene. If one to become a carboxylic acid, is simply changing the E at the back to become oic acid. So you are changing your propane to your propanoic acid. And propane is a 3 carbon. Therefore, your propanoic acid is a 3 carbon. So your structure looks something like this. I hope you can see the 3 carbon over here. The first carbon that holding to your double bond OOH. Your second carbon. Your third carbon. And your propanoid acid doesn't need a number. Why do we don't put one propanoid acid? Like I said, your carbon that holding your COOH must always be carbon number one. Okay, because it will always be at the side. So it will always be carbon number one. Therefore, it's not needed to put one propanoid acid. Remember that, okay? Next example, you have your octane changing to your carboxylic acid. So simply changing the E at the back to become your oic acid at the end. So octane to become octanoic acid. Octanoic acid is an 8-carbon carboxylic acid. Let's see. 
the egg carbon is always included the carbon that holding the double bond OOH that is your number one two three four five six seven eight so bear that in mind when I say octanoid acid is an egg carbon the egg carbon is including the COOH okay bear that in mind that is how we write the parent name of your carboxylic acid simply changing the E at the back to become oic acid. So from your ethane to become ethanoic acid, butane to become butanoic acid, pentane to become pentanoic acid. Okay, simple, very, very easy. It's just as always, but you are now having oic acid. So now let's go into the IUPAC naming of your carboxylic acid. What happens if I have a structure that holding a COOH? Simple, the first rule is your COOH must be in the parent chain. In the other words, to find the longest carbon chain, we always start with your COOH because they must be in the parent chain. Second, a very simple thing that we have discussed just now, the carbon in your COOH must be carbon number one. You don't have a choice, guys. The carbon in the COOH must be the carbon number one in your parent chain. Must be. Okay? So, let's look at some example. I have a very simple example over here. So, this is my carbon that holding my OH and also the carbon that holding double bond O. So, this carbon is the first carbon that you are going to highlight to find the longest carbon chain. Moving downward, and you found a carbon. And then this carbon having a branch of one carbon on the left and one carbon on the right. And since both are having only one carbon, so moving to the left or moving to the right will be the same longest carbon. And over here, the longest carbon is your carbon one, carbon that holding the COOH must be carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. So it's a three carbon carboxylic acid. Your parent will be propanoic acid okay and the rest of the rule will be the same i have a substituent over here is your methyl group so the final name of this organic compound of this carboxylic acid will be 2 methyl propanoic acid and guys do we need to put number for the carboxylic acid no because it must be carbon number one simple easy just a kind reminder over here, the rest of the rules will be exactly the same as what we have learned previously. For example, the name and the position of your substituent will be the same as what you have learned previously. The name will be arranged alphabetically order as always. The prefixes di, tri, tetra for the same substituent. We will always stick with the prefixes when we have the same substituents. The comma will be used when you have in-between numbers. The dashes is used when you have between numbers and alphabet. That is your basic rules in writing the name. And last but not least, the longest parent chain with the more substituent will be choose. When you have the same longest parent chain, we always choose the one with most substituent. Okay, so the only difference over here in your carboxylic acid is your COOH must be the parent. And the COOH must deserve carbon number 1. Easy. Let's try another example over here. Same thing. We are going to identify the carbon that holding the COOH first because this will definitely be your carbon number 1 and your parent chain. Moving upward. So you found a carbon over here. This carbon having a left, having a right. Obviously going to the left because there is more carbon. So going to the left over that. So. We have another split way. You can go straight to the left having two carbon or you can go upright having three carbon. So which one is a bigger group? We always go for the one that have more people so that your longest carbon chain will come with most substituent. Go up and go this side. Okay, going left or right at this point will be the same because there's only one carbon left. And your parent over here will depend on how many carbon you have in total. One. Two, three, four, five, six. It's a six carbon carboxylic acid. Therefore, it will be hexanoic 
acid that is your six carbon carboxylic acid and then you have three substituents let's write the substituent the first one i have over here is your five methyl the second i have over here is a two carbon substituent so four ethyl group over here i have my two methyl therefore the final name of this carboxylic acid will be alphabetically ordered so four ethyl comfort and then you have two same substituents that we will use prefixes therefore you will have two comma five dimethyl last but not least your parent is your hexanoic acid so hexanoic acid and that is your complete name for this organic compound your alphabetically order your prefixes when to use the comma, when to use the dashes. Simple, easy. So we have come across IUPAC naming in so many topics and I hope you realize that they are actually very similar. The only things that we change is actually the parent. Okay, the rest of the rules will be same. Therefore, I hope everybody can do this very well. And we will try the last example. So over here, the same thing. We will start with the carbon that holding the COOH because that must be my parent. Moving across to find the longest carbon chain. I have my left, I have my bottom, I have my top. So always choose the one that have a bigger group. So obviously over here, going up is the biggest group. So going up, that is my carbon. I can see a substituent already chloro. So going to the right to find the end carbon. And you realize that there is no more carbon left. Therefore, this is my parent chain of four carbon. Four carbon carboxylic acid will be named as butanoic acid. And as always, carboxylic acid must be the carbon holding number one. So one, two, three, four. Okay. And from the numbering, you can see your substituent over there located at which carbon. So the first substituent I have over here is my ethyl 2 carbon and my ethyl located at carbon number 2, 2 ethyl. I have a methyl group over here, again located at carbon number 2, so 2 methyl. Over here I have a chloro guys, so make sure you have the spelling correctly. That is my chloro located at carbon number 3. Last but not least, we are holding your OH as your substituent. I hope you remember when OH becomes substituent, the name will be hydroxy, located at carbon number 4. So I have 4 substituents, and all 4 substituents are different. So no prefixes needed, but we will focus only on the alphabetically order. So alphabetically order, obviously the chloro will come first because C comes first. Therefore, you have your 3 chloro. And then you continue to your E. So you have your 2 ethyl, followed by your H hydroxy, 4 hydroxy. Make sure there is no L at the back. Last but not least, 2 methyl M. And your parent is your butanoic acid. And this is the IUPAC name of this example. Okay? So everything is very similar as what we have learned previously in your IUPAC naming. But the only things that make it different right now is your COH must be in the parent chain. The carbon must be carbon number 1. And also your parent name will change from the normal alkene to your oil acid. And that are the only differences. Simple. Next, let's look at some common name that you need to know. So the first common name that you'll come across is your formic acid. What is actually formic acid? Simple. Formic acid is actually your methanoic acid. And guys, methanoic acid means how many carbon? One carbon. So your structure looks something like this. One carbon carboxylic acid. Therefore, the bond will be holding hydrogen. That is your formic acid. Formic acid is one carbon carboxylic acid, which is your methanoic acid. Next is your acetic acid. Acetic acid come up quite often. Make sure you know what is acetic acid. 
because acetic acid is actually your vinegar and your acetic acid is actually your ethanoic acid. So your ethanoic acid is how many carbon? Ethanoic acid is a two carbon carboxylic acid, eta. All right, you're from your ethane. So the structure will look something like this. One carbon carboxylic acid, okay, holding another carbon. So that is your ethanoic acid, two carbon carboxylic acid, okay? Another common name that you can come across is your butyric acid. Your butyric acid is what? It's a four carbon, obviously, but not four carbon straight chain. It's a four carbon with branches. It's actually your two methyl propanoic acid. So it's a four carbon over there. All right, your propa is a three carbon with a methyl group, one carbon. Okay, so it's a four carbon, but it's not a four carbon straight chain. So two methyl propanoic acid looks something like this. That is your propanoic acid. Three carbon holding carboxylic acid, carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, propanoic acid. Your two methyl group. Methyl group located at the carbon number two. Last but not least, the simplest common name that you always come across is your benzoic acid. Because the IUPAC name can also be called as your benzoic acid. And the structure is very simple. Make sure only one thing. Your COOH must be directly bonded to your benzene ring. Make sure your COOH is directly bonded to your benzene ring. And that is the last common name in carboxylic acid that you need to know. Alright, and that's it about the naming for carboxylic acid. It's very, very easy. It's very similar as what you have learned previously. Make sure you know and make sure you memorize a few common names that you might come across in your carboxylic acid. And I think that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And if this video helps you, don't forget to give me a like and hit the subscribe button for more videos. Thank you for watching again and I'll see you in the next video.